Hi folks, let's make this dust shoe for the Tormach. This should help us make better parts by avoiding to recut chips. It's gonna help keep the machine a lot cleaner when we're cutting certain materials. And it's gonna help us see what's going on. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Setting up a piece of raw material to make the spindle clamp we're using the super glue technique, which is great because it's going to give us access to the inside and outside of our part. Starting off with a shear hog, we're trying a new method, which is, you ready for it? Slotting. Don't think we've got the optimal speeds and feeds just yet. This did work fine, but you heard the spindle bog down just a hair. 7,500 RPMs, 12 thou inch feed per tooth, which is 90 inches a minute, taking it in 45 thou maximum roughing step downs. Stick around, we'll do some more testing and see later where we come up with an optimal recipe for this. I like using the shear hog for this type of slotting because it's a really open tool, less likely to chip weld, and if we break an insert, they're relatively inexpensive compared to, say, a solid carbide. Cutting out the center with a 2D adaptive, 10,000 RPMs, 8 thousandths of an inch feed per tooth, which is 80 inches a minute. Here we're going back to a more standard recipe for our shear hog, 0.1 inch optimal load, 0.2 inch roughing step down. This works great. We've been learning more and more about the super glue technique. We found some better glues right here to the page on this. You also want to be conscious of heat. Heat is a way, along with things like acetone and force, to remove super glue. So if your part gets too hot, it will weaken or possibly remove the super glue. We also wanted to mention, you want to put the tape on both your fixture and on the part. So you've got a sandwich of tape on each side with the super glue in between. The tape absolutely makes this a more robust solution in terms of the work holding power, but also so much easier to remove the super glue and end up with a clean part when you're done without having to soak it in solvents or acetone. Drilling out some clearance holes for some quarter inch fasteners. 17 and 60 fourths drill bit, 150 surface feet per minute, 5 thousandths of an inch feed per rev. To machine out this slot area here, Ed has picked two contours or two changes as the custom selection, and that's what limits this toolpath to just that area. Here's the problem. It's difficult for me to go take a look at what sketches he actually selected there. And that could be really useful if I want to go edit them. So I'd love to see Autodesk improve that workflow of being able to reference back to the sketches or selection here in the operation. Because right now, I'd have to expand the CAD tree and start enabling and toggling sketches to figure out what is what. Very cumbersome. The other thing I've heard is coming is a rest machining in 2D Adaptive, which probably would have done the same thing that we're looking for here. And it would be a welcomed functionality for 2D Adaptive. And an adaptive to convert this hole into a slot, and that is so that as we clamp this shut, there's some travel in that to allow it to close. Cleanup passes on the inside and outside of our part, and this is a great example of where you want to make use of the CAD environment, because we don't actually have the ability to select the profile that we want right here, because it tries to wrap itself around the whole part because of the split. So the trick head back into model. We'll do this in the split ring component by activating it. Hit P on your keyboard for project. We'll select a face. We'll put it on the bottom side. And what we can now do is click this face once and that projects the inside and outside geometry of that face. We will turn off the body and we can now better see that face itself. And all we really need to do is hit L for line zoom in and connect these two pieces. And we now have sketch entities that we can select in CAM. We have had difficulties with Fusion, sometimes selecting sketches where you have a mix of purple projected as well as black or blue self-created sketch lines. The other option is to drag a box around everything, right click, break link. We've now turned that all to blue. And what that means is when it was purple, it was still linked back to our solid model. So if we change the size of this ring, the ID or the OD, this sketch data would have updated as a purple linked sketch. Now that it's blue, it's no longer linked back to it. What that lets us do is we could say delete things that we didn't want and have a little bit more control over manipulating it. If we want to lock this down so that say we couldn't accidentally drag it and change the size, drag a box around it and choose fix. We've got more Fusion 360 tutorials like this over at NYC CNC. 
head over to Fusion 360 and you can choose one of the drop downs like CAD and walk through some of those tutorials. And finally for this setup, a chamfer around our part, we recently switched from using the traditional mill drills to a spiral fluted chamfer tool and we really like it. We're able to run it faster and harder with better surface finishes. One pro tip, when you chamfer, make sure under edit passes to have a smoothing tolerance set. Usually one thousandth of an inch is enough, but as you run these chamfer tools faster, we're running this one at 80 inches a minute, you want to make sure you've got a nice smooth and fluid motion. If you don't know what smoothing is, click here for a card where we walk through the differences between smoothing and tolerances and how it can actually help you make better parts. Over to the laser, here to cut a jig. So we're using that jig as a really easy way to line up this part to do our final operation, which is drilling the side hole for the clamp. And after the hole is drilled, we're running a slitting saw. This is a carbide slitting saw, thousand surface feet per minute, one thousandth of an inch feed per tooth, which is 90 inches per minute, taking roughing passes at 50 thousandths of an inch. On the NYC CNC page for this project where we've got the CAD files to download it, we've also got a link to some of the tools like this slitting saw that we used. The laser cut jigs are awesome. We did this back in Widget 190 where we were making a custom jig for an otherwise pretty complex part and it really is a handy work holding and alignment trick. Next up, laser cutting the two pieces of acrylic that we're using. So here's the thing that I like about this project. We chose to make it with an aluminum spindle clamp and the two pieces of acrylic. It's a great way to do it. There are other ways though. You might be able to use a laser that you have access to at a local makerspace or school, or you could probably 3D print this whole project. Finally, throwing on some of the dust shoe stuff that we picked up from Amazon. Again, link in the video description. Zip ties are actually a super easy way to put this on. They also let us remove it or replace it as needed. And some final assembly. Tormach uses a 3 and 3 8 inch spindle nose diameter, which is a really common diameter. It's also what you would see on machines like a bridge port. So there's a decent chance you, you're going to be able to take this sort of a product and either modify it if you need to, or use it as is on other machines. And then we removed the ATC access panel on our PCNC 1100. We threw in a sheet of laser cut MDF with a cutout for some hose that we picked up off Amazon. And we tied that into a Harbor Freight dust collector. It's way more powerful than a shop back. We had hoped that the shop back would work uh, as the bootstrapper in us didn't want to pick up the dust collector, but it ends up the dust collector really does help and is, is well worth it if you're going to cut materials like Rich Light, which we're cutting in next week's Wednesday widget. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Again, CAD and CAM files available on NYC CNC. Take care. See you soon.